Alright guys, hello, what is up? The Logodators here and welcome back to another video. Today we are playing Kerbal Space Program yet again. It's been a while since we've done a Kerbal Space Program video, but here we are. We're in the uh, space plane hangar building our SSTO. But before I talk about this SSTO, I'd like to share with you our next Let's Play series. I asked you guys what our next gaming series should be and I cast out a poll and you guys went for From the Depths. So, in the very, very near future, we'll start up that series, and, uh, I'll, I'll be watching some tutorial series in the meantime, so I can, uh, at least know what's going on. But I can't wait to start that, and, uh, those videos are gonna be out very, very soon. But what you're seeing right now in Kerbal Space Program is my Sparrow 2 SSTO. This plane is designed to go to the Mun and back while carrying three tourists, or a pilot, engineer, scientist, or three Kerbals, whoever you'd like to bring. Alright, so here we are, we've fired up the rapiers and we are accelerating down the runway. I'm gonna speed up time here too, so you guys don't have to sit through the whole mission, which took quite some time. And uh, it says we're gonna compress it into something more watchable, but we have uh, wheels off the ground, we're gonna retract that undercarriage and we are going to uh, fly to space. Now, the trick with the rapiers here is to try and get them above 400 meters a second, and then that's when they really start kicking in, they can really accelerate you out of the atmosphere if you do it right. I've also got a, a little bit of oxidizer in the plane. I've drained most of most of it out just to save weight. But uh, if you guys are flying this craft, uh, then it's probably advisable to uh, put a little bit more oxidizer in the plane. Um, but anyways, here we are. We're going up at a pretty considerable angle here, just to try and escape the thicker parts of the atmosphere. So we can use that nuclear engine, which is extremely efficient, and we want to use that as much as possible because um, that's going to save a lot of our Delta V here. Uh, we're flying really far up now. We're getting all those mock effects. It's getting pretty hot. Our nose cone's going to start overheating here in a second, but it's all right because we're escaping the atmosphere very, very quickly. And there we go. We fired up that nuclear engine. Our rapiers are in uh, closed cycle mode. We're using up that oxidizer, and we are just punching our way out of the atmosphere now. Now we're about to expend all of our oxidizer, there we go, so we're just relying on that one Nerva, and we're going to try and use that to get to orbit. The problem with the Nervas though, uh, even though they're extremely efficient, is they're just not, they're not very powerful. You see, the thrust to weight ratio right now is like 0.3 or something like that, which means it's, it's bad, that's just what it means. We're going very, very slow acceleration. And it's going to take a while to get into orbit. In fact, we almost don't get into orbit here because our thrust is so poor. But luckily for us, those um, close cycle rapiers and this is the initial push that we got out of the atmosphere. It's going to be enough to get us all the way into space and barely into orbit. And once we get into orbit, we're going to have uh, around 3,000 meters a second. And that's going to be enough to perform a MUN landing mission. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. I think this would be a nice time to address the fact that this is not a vanilla version of the game. No, this is a game save with a bunch of mods installed. Uh, visual mods such as Real Plume, which is making that Nerva look so beautiful. A uh, smoke screen, you probably saw that earlier with the rapiers. You see environmental visual enhancements and scatter at work. Uh, we got Planet Shine installed. We've got um, other mods too, like Tech Life Support, which is why I added those uh, life support cans. So, you know, Jebediah doesn't suffocate while he's on the moon and um, docking port alignment indicator, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm distracting you from the fact that we have our apoapsis all the way up to 80,000 kilometers, which means we're going to space, and all we had to do is burn prograde when we got there, and we were in orbit. What I'm doing now is just adjusting my inclination ever so slightly so I can get a mud encounter a lot more easier. And now the only thing left to do is make a maneuver node so we can fly ourselves out to the mud and complete our mission and plant a flag and do a bunch of heroic things. But first we're just gonna fine tune it to make sure we get very very close and we can get into orbit rather efficiently. And we're just uh, time warping around the planet now so we can get to our maneuver node and we'll burn our way to the mud. And here we are, we've reached our maneuver node, we've reached the transfer window, so it's time to turn around and ignite our engine, so there we go. A bit of misfortunate timing right here as we're doing our burn in the dark side of Kerbin, and we can't really see what's going on except that big massive plume from the Nerva engine. But as we look at the map screen here, we can see that our apoapsis is uh, steadily increasing all the way up to the Moon's sphere of influence, and we're able to uh, get all the way there. There, you can see it right here. 
and uh, we're gonna get all the way to the Mun. Actually, um, right here, we're going to be on an escape trajectory at a curb, and if we do nothing, however, we're gonna slow ourselves down around the Mun so we can fall into orbit around that celestial body. Then we can perform a landing, but there Kerbin goes out in the distance, and you can see that shadow that passed alongside um, the Kerbin. That's actually the Mun's shadow. Uh, in, in KSP, the Mun is not on an inclined orbit, and so eclipses are actually very, very, very common. In fact, they happen like once every week or something. Like once every the Mun goes around its orbit, then you know that's when uh, an eclipse happens. But anyways, here we're slowing ourselves down, we're falling uh, into the Mun's uh, sphere of influence, well we already have, and we're just, you know, burning retrograde, and we're going to uh, just get into orbit here. Nothing too much to say about that, but here we are, we got a nice orbit, not too inclined, which is very nice, and we just have to pick a landing site now. Now the thing about picking a landing site for this craft is the fact that it doesn't have any vertical thrust, really. So what you try and do is you try and pick a landing site in a crater. And I'll talk more about choosing your landing site in a second, but right now we are getting a beauty shot. Jebediah Kerman in between the canard and the wing of the craft, and he's going to bump into the wing there really quick, and then he's going to get inside so we can choose his landing site. And about that, uh, with this craft, since it has no vertical thrust, like I mentioned, you want to land in a crater. And you do that so you can use the crater walls as some like a sort of a ramp. So you can just shoot yourself up into the air and then you can use your thrust to uh, get yourself into orbit. And uh, I've picked a crater kind of in the middle there. I'm going to try and adjust my uh, inclination here. I'm going to burn anti-normal so my path falls into that crater. You can see my path is right in the middle of that crater here. Actually that was a bit of a mistake on my part. I probably shouldn't have gone for that crater, just something that was already along my orbital path because that almost costs me the mission right there. I lost a bunch of Delta V doing that and I almost didn't make it home, but we'll get to that in a bit as we are making our final descent. We're just burning retrograde a bit there so we can fall into the crater and give ourselves a nice smooth landing. I'm also using my readouts from a Kerbal Engineer Redux over there to the right of the screen, and that's actually a very, very useful mod. If you don't have that or um, you need mods for a mod thing, if you want to stick vanilla, then of course stick vanilla, but that is a very essential mod if you want to play the game with mods, because that thing is so useful. It gives you a bunch of Delta V readout, readouts, it gives you suicide burn distance, it gives you your altitude. It's very useful. It's like your cheat sheet right there. I'm actually using it right now to calculate my suicide burn distance so I can save as much fuel as possible. Um, that's very useful in a vanilla game, say if you do not have that suicide burn distance and you know, that could mean life or death on your craft. But anyways, here we are, we're very very close to the surface, I'm doing max thrust, but as you can see we still bump into the surface rather hard, about 10 meters a second or so. I'm actually a little surprised that none of my flaps broke off there, but they didn't break off, so that's good. And we get to jump out of the plane and plant ourselves a flag to commemorate the historic landing of Sparrow 2. And you can see here, we've collected some EVA reports, some surface samples, and stuff like that. I've also uh, forgot to mention I have Crowdsource Science Mod as well, which uh, has a bunch of uh, better science messages than just the plain old bland ones. I, I, like the, um, I like the science messages, just, you know, they have some humor to it, you know. I, I like that. I like that. It makes the game a little more interesting. But anyways, uh, we've done our duty, so I think it's time to leave. We're gonna just taxi our way out of here, and we're gonna irradiate, uh, irradiate the flag with a bunch of uh, radiation with that nuclear engine, and it's time to accelerate up the ramp wall. You might want a quick save here if you have the option, because doing this maneuver is very, very dangerous. Uh, I had a quick save once here myself, because the, the moon's surface is very bumpy and it can throw you around in all sorts of directions that you don't really want to be thrown around in and it can break your craft and you won't be able to, you know, return home safely. But we are up in the air now and all that's left to do is fly our way into orbit. I'm, right now I'm looking at my Delta V radi uh, readouts and I'm very, very nervous because it looks like I'm not going to have enough Delta V to get home. However, uh, after going into orbit here, you'll see that I have just enough Delta V to make it home. I have like 80 meters a second or something like that to spare, maybe a bit more. But um, you'll, you'll see that here in a second. Uh, right now, we're just uh, burning ourselves into orbit. The good thing about uh, 
these later missions, like, get going into, like, the later phases of this, like, MUN mission is the fact that the thrust-to-weight ratio on the Nerva is a lot better than it was before. And because of the added thrust of the Nerva engine, I'm able to accelerate out of the MUN sphere of influence a lot faster. I'm able to climb a lot faster from the surface. I'm able to do a lot of things a lot faster. I can react to... Uh, dire situations. I mean, it, it really can save your life just that thrust to weight ratio. In fact, if I had that thrust to weight ratio before, I probably wouldn't have bumped into the MUN so hard. But um, luckily for us, it all ended fine. We've got our flag planted down and we are returning home. We've got a maneuver node set up and we have just enough delta V to make it home, like 100 meters a second to spare or something like that. But here we are, we're burning home, and there we go, we can just see the outline of the ship from the uh, light of the nuclear engine there. And we're bringing our periapsis down to 40,000 kilometers, that should be fine. You want to be careful though, when you're uh, going back into Kerbin's atmosphere, because that re-entry heating can be pretty nasty, as you can see here in, uh, when I time warp all the way down to curb and get ready for the re-entry, I put away my solar panels. I put out my brakes for a quick second there, but I must have retracted them or something. Maybe I press B. Yeah, there it goes. Now, when I'm re-entering the atmosphere, make sure to keep an eye on those temperature gauges. As you can see, that inline cockpit doesn't have really good heat resistance, and the other cockpit too, the Mark 1 Command cockpit or something like that, is even worse because it sticks out the front of the aircraft because it's got a nose cone built into it. But uh, keeping the plane tilted up the way I'm doing it right here should be just enough to stop it from spontaneously combusting, and it is. In fact, uh, we do a really nice aerobrake maneuver. We bring our apoapsis down to about uh, 100,000 uh, kilometers, which is not too bad. Uh, it means we're going to be able to orbit Kerbin, and actually we're going to be able to choose when we can re-enter, and we're going to use that advantage to try and land on the runway, and you'll see that here in a second. But anyways, we're going in for a second plant pass to bring our apoapsis down even further, and we're going to do the same thing, and this time, luckily for us, that uh, re-entry heating is not going to be as uh, much as it was before, because we're coming in 500 meters a second slower than the last pass, and our inline cockpit is going to be nowhere near to exploding, which is fantastic as always. And there you have it, we've actually slowed down enough on those two aero brake passes that we can re-enter and land on Kerbin on the next one. And that's exactly what we're going to do, but before we attempt our landing, we're actually going to raise our periapsis. And we're going to do that because we want Kerbin to rotate beneath us. And we want it to rotate beneath us because we want the KSC to appear on our periapsis side and we can accurately land on the runway. And that's a nice thing about SSTOs and space planes and space shuttles and that sort of stuff is because they're planes. You can actually choose where to land. You can fly to the landing site once you've lowered your speed enough and, you know, just accurately land at the KSC and, you know, pick the runway, recover and get all your repair costs back. And, you know, it's a lot safer to land on the runway, too. But anyways, we've uh, deployed our air brakes here. We're trying to aggressively pitch downwards to keep ourselves in the atmosphere to stop our uh, plane from flying up into space again. And we actually do begin to skip off of the atmosphere. As you can see here, we're above 50,000 kilometers. But not to worry, as we have dropped our speed enough that we're going to fall back down and accurately glide ourselves to the KSC. As you can see, I'm turning a bit to the right here just so we can uh, get to the KSC a lot easier and just fly ourselves on over there. We got a bit lucky too because it's going to be on the day side of Kerbin and we get to fly over those mountains, all the obstacles we get to pass because we're a plane and everything's looking pretty nice. Jebediah is having a nice time in the cockpit and yeah, so there's the KSC down there. We're uh, pitching downwards very aggressively again and those air brakes are very nice because we can really do a feather fall, uh, feather fall too, and yeah, we're, I mean look at that, we're falling down at like 200 meters a second very accurately, pretty much like a dart just falling towards the ground, and the very nice thing about this plane too is when it doesn't have any fuel in the plane, it becomes extremely stable as you can see here. I'm using WASD keys, it's probably even more stable and easier to fly with a joystick as well, I haven't really tried that with KSP, but I really should. Anyways, we're on our final approach to the runway, uh, just making sure everything's good. We're adjusting our controls here with uh, caps lock to make it fine tune. And we're actually going to slow down for the landing here as well. I do botch the landing quite badly though, but it ends up being fine anyway. I mean, 
here we go, We're, I'm just trying to flare at the last second, but since WASD keys do maximum input, I can't really accurately land. We're flying at like, what is that, 50 meters a second, which is extremely slow. We're about to stall, and there we go, touchdown. A bit bouncy, but Jebediah Kerman can manage it, and here we are on the runway to a full stop. And there you have it, a fully reusable SSTO space plane able to land on the MUN with three tourists. And that's actually going to do it for today's video, so I do hope you've enjoyed. If you did like this video, make sure to like the video. I also have a Patreon too if you're keen on supporting the channel. Uh, you get cool rewards on Discord as well for that. And I also have a Twitter too, so make sure to check out all those uh, social media networks. And I'll see you later. Goodbye, guys.